Here we are um, together to discuss this uh, topic of light. I think about light in both literal and metaphorical terms, insofar as, uh, you know, there's so many ways like, uh, to consider it. It's not just visible light rays, um, but also, like, you can think about light in terms of, like, you know, weight. You know, in the way that, like, fire, which is also a, a, f a form of light, historically, which gave way to uh, electric light, um, and, and both being having the potential for like uh, destruction. So yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that we can have a discussion about the topic that is fluid. You were all chosen because you work with light in various ways. You know, clearly lead the, you know, um, again, photography and working in the landscape um, uh, and working with natural light, Esther, um, uh, utilizing similar materials, i.e. concrete, and then working with uh, man-made um, light. Ellie's uh, work is uh, generally working with materials that are, that are soft, softer fabric or yarn, which is uh, a light material where you sort of um, occupy a space and creating forms within space. And uh, David, uh, you'll be the uh, token painter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious as to hear um, how you, as individuals, think about light in your work in regards to that uh, introduction. So we'll start with Lee. All right. Thank you, Rico. Yeah, even when you were just talking there, I started thinking of all these other iterations of light, because there is the first thought of light as illumination. Um, from the sun rays coming down to, but then actual physical weight versus lightness and heaviness or humor. So it's definitely a word, a, a word that can then key off of. Uh, maybe energy also is thinking about, also a thing in common with the sun rays creating energy um, by feeding. So in my work, uh, I, I use landscape photography or landscape photographs as the basis for sculptural works, um, sometimes reacting or working with the wall or space. So uh, kind of there's multiple parts of my process and these photographs are then used to create something else out of and to have the final work be, uh, have a physical presence um, in the space of the viewer. So there's the light on the beginning side when I'm taking, or that it, you know, when I'm taking the image or out I take all my own photographs too out in, in, in the landscape. So the changing of the light from a different time of the day to the other is just something I'm constantly uh, witnessing and observing when I'm out shooting. Um, and you know, trying to capture that, that light like, or the fading of it. And you know, just recently was in Joshua Tree and like, to try to get that color of the sunset, you know, which is almost impossible to get on film or in, in actual, but to, to, to try to transmit that experience of, of being enveloped by that light into a, a kind of a work that eventually the viewer is, is dealing with in a gallery in person. Um, so there's that end of it, but also on the other side, thinking of the work in, in the gallery or where it's being shown and how can light be um, you know, I have done pieces where, for example, the photograph is on a wall with a window behind it and there's a hole, so the light's coming through, through the outside world into the gallery and you have that actual light and the image light and that sort of complication or um, light passing through or creating shadows. I mean, these are, these are definitely things I think about a lot and, and how, and as a sculptor, thinking about a form, how you know, direction of the light, the angle, and the form, and then how, where the viewer is in position to that can all change how you perceive it. There's something that I find deeply spiritual, which is another um, way of thinking about light in your work, uh, in that, you know, you're in nature again, and, you know, that's something that, like, comes up again and again for me, you know, and uh, maybe you can speak to that part of it. Again, you're sort of bringing together like these photographs, these images, you know, and there's a collision or maybe an integration of, of the photo into um, the solid material, this man-made material. 
uh, i.e. concrete. And so, which gets into like, again, like this consideration of like the opposite, which is weight or mm -hmm. a certain kind of heaviness. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is uh, really interesting to me. So I don't know if you want to sort of try to expand on the two questions, which is, which is yeah. the spiritual and, and light. Um, I mean, because there's often like things like, um, well, you oftentimes work with like uh, the moon, or like in the sunset, and these are motifs, for lack of a better term, that, that seem consistent in the work. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the first sort of going back to that experience of being there and watching the sunset, the, the part of my works where I am gathering, taking photographs is definitely sort of the core base of, of, of my experiences in these places. And um, to be like very present in those situations, observant and kind of take it all in as much as I can. And um, I don't know, just sort of be in awe of <laughs> the simple rising of the sun and setting every day. And this happens all the time and be observant of it. I think sometimes living here in the city, like you just don't even notice. A day passes, a day passes, and maybe you're too busy it's doing something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you might not even notice the sun setting most days, and then out there, when that's sort of all you have and the sky is so big, it's like the whole day culminates in this event. So it can be quite dramatic and maybe spiritual as, like, as, as to, to what you're mentioning. Well, and it's really important for you to be in nature to, right. rather than sort of taking the images from off the, the internet. And so it's important for you to take the pictures, to be in nature and sort of commune in right. that sense, which, which maybe like this term spiritual is, is my term that I'm projecting onto your work. But that's how I always experience the work, you know, as being deeply spiritual and uh, very moving in that regard. I mean, of course, beautiful, but... And I think there's something about that moment with the landscape. That's why, like, you, you know, working within that realm is because everyone ha brings their own experience with the landscape at some point. So sometimes seeing an image of uh, moonrise or sunset reminds them of when they were in these places or situations. So it can be a way of connecting people through their, their experiences and not having it, be, having it be specific, but also open. I'd say a lot of my work is also rooted in landscape, especially the sun, the setting of the sun, the rising of the sun, and the colors that come from it. Um, in earlier works, I was using plexiglass, and I was really interested in the refracted light that that created. But more recently, I'm using actual neon, so I'm using like a literally light in my work. Um, and it's also contrasted with um, cement. So I've got like a the physical light contrasted with like the heaviness of concrete. Um, that's a big role, I think, in my work. Um, and landscape, too. Um, I was thinking of the circular works that I make as a horizon line, and then the arc is, comes from the sun or other planets in the sky. Um, but then more recently, I'm sort of thinking about objects from other places or landscapes or planets, so there's a little sci-fi in there. Yeah, I would say landscape has a lot to do with it. More specifically, I, there was an image that I saw of something, of a new piece that it looked like that you were using minerals? Or, yeah, I've yeah. used a lot of agates and uh, crystals and yeah, geodes, yeah. so I'm literally taking from the land and sort of making a relationship out of a few different materials at once and sort of the contrast of like a man-made material and natural stones. Yeah. yeah, I find the work very powerful in the sense that it's like, you know, you're taking these very simple elements and um, bringing them together in this really delicate way. And again, it's very simple, but it, they're, they're very beautiful in that. that oh, thank you. I, you know, and that's really exciting in a way that, you know, it's not, for me, always uh, about, like, language, you know, mm -hmm. there's like a, a Visual. slowness. Yeah, but yeah. because they, 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 they could be, like, cute, but they're, you know, they're really, there's especially some. the ones that have, like, you know, sort of um, natural materials, mm -hmm. you know, incorporated. Well, I think of myself as a sculptor, and I'm also kind of, a contrarian. I think um, 
like for so for me, light is just the opposite of what sculpture should be. And especially when I started out in the '80s in the Midwest, you know, it was supposed to be heavy and serious and you know um, permanent, you know, and all of these things. And um, and I just thought, well, I'm going to make mine exactly the opposite of that, you know, out of materials I'm not supposed to be using and. It should be funny, and it should be not difficult, but easy. And um, so I think in, of light in terms of how I work is maybe coming right from the start of when I was making sculpture. It's just turning away from what I was supposed to be, or I perceived that I was supposed to be making a giant metal sculpture about you know, death. You know, or something dark, you know, and wanted to make something. And I think I probably thought of that at the time as a slightly kind of political, like feminist statement, as well as that, you know, you're a lady and that's the opposite of what the guys were making. And so I've, and I think even to today, I'm using this yarn and making this fiber art, um, and it uses light in, uh, in different ways, you know, color and the stripes. I'm really into making these curtains, um, and they, the light goes through them in stripes, and the, it plays on the strands of the color, and they're very light. As you said, the, you know, a 25-pound sculpture that you can just hang from the ceiling. And, um, yeah, they're very prismatic, yeah. or prisms as they relate to uh, rainbow. Yeah. You know, I was looking at a lot of images of, of light on the interweb, again in preparation for this discussion that I initiated. <laughs> 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 but you know, there's one image of this this white light passing through a, a, a prism, uh, i.e., Pink Floyd. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just sort of yeah, you know, yeah. just sort of seeing the way that the light is refracted and broken up, and, and the color separation. I think about like. Um, color spectrums, or yeah. the spectrum, of these spectrums of light, which is something that I think that is um, something more subconscious in my own practice. But you know, but that's what I think about when I look at your pieces. But also lightness and uh, and the kind of humor, yeah. like, in terms of weight, like the material again is is very light. But you're doing a lot in terms of like you know you know occupying um, a space. You know, more specifically, a corner, like it's some of the installations that uh, you had in New Jersey. Yeah, I mean, humor is really important. I mean, I, I like, I just like things that are, when you say in light, you know, as serious or versus light or funny. Um, and, um, you know, maybe every day, you know, not important, but light, like L I T E, you know, like, Good. you know, um, something light, you know, it's like for, you know, I, I think it's, just something that I'm really, you know, take that's important to me. And yeah, we were discussing like opposites a little bit earlier. Yeah, exactly. You know, so like, the night, something that I try to um, think about um, when teaching or talking to students, because there's a tendency to only focus on one side. But I was saying that like, you know, I mean, naturally, um, you need both. You need right. the contrast, you know, so. The other thing I was saying of today when I was in the bath was that I was thinking about light because I said like tread lightly and I think that I love to travel and I really like my sculptures to be light because I just don't want them to be a pain in the butt and I want them to be easy which is the opposite of hard and um, you know and, and you know I like you should travel light you know and um, I think and then I was thinking about like well they're transportable you know and so that that was another way of of thinking about light that I was thinking of it you know, because things are transported you know through light or we use it to to it, it you know messages are carried over light you know like um, I did a piece once in about um, the digital code which is it uses electric electricity in on or off signals to you know communicate a message and you know so send you know so that's another thing I just about or radio waves or right or you know the or trans microwaves or I mean, I was reading about that, I mean, the, the less visible, yeah. you know. And that gets back to your spirituality thing, you know, the stuff that you can't see, you know, how it's still all around us. Exactly. Yeah.
do. Yeah. It's funny, you know, when, when, I mean, I'm old enough that when, when you took a painting class, like an undergraduate class, they didn't talk about color. They didn't use the color word. It was always light. And it was about this idea of, of uh, light relating to place being a really specific quality of light. Um, and I mean, obviously, I mean, painting, like everything else we do, needs light, and, and it's about reflecting light. But I did always want to work with light as a material. Um, and I didn't really get a chance to do it, other than some kind of early things that I don't think were very successful. But I got a chance to um, make some glass sculpture. And there's a kind of purity to the idea that, that the, 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 the group of work are called light traps. Because when you have this block, they're, they're kind of eccentrically formed geometric volumes. Um, and if they're just in a room sitting by themselves, OK, they're kind of interesting. The glass looks nice. But the minute you have direct light on it, whether it's sunlight or artificial light, it, it illuminates that thing and transforms the object. Um, and I think it, it, it transforms it in a way, in a lot of the ways that we've been, we've been talking about it. They become kind of, um, you get this sense of them having a little bit of a spiritual quality um, because it's a little, you know, light doesn't, it goes in there and bounces around, so it's not really predictable how the object's going to look. Um, and, you know, I was always a big fan of the West Coast people. I love Terrell's work and, you know, Irwin's work and, I, you know, um, there's something so pure and beautiful about that. And I'm always kind of, it seems like, you know, dealing with, with much more mundane things. Um, but the glass really allowed that to happen. And, and the funny thing, talking about all this stuff about light, not heavy. Um, and I don't know how much glass work I'll do in the future because it's, a, I mean, at least the way I did it with their solid cast glass. Um, they're both really fragile and really heavy. Um, and the funny thing is, it's the opposite of, say, a Sarah, when you're talking about the guys. It doesn't look heavy. It, you know, this, they're not that big. They're about this big. Um, and they look really light because of the, the quality of the light. Um, but in fact, they're really, really dense and heavy. Um, but the, the other thing that, that kept coming up when I was listening to you do your intro, Rico, and listening to other people talk about their work, um, you know, the other thing about light is that it's, you know, energy came up, but it is also about, you know, burning. It is about consuming. The sun is consuming itself, and that's why we have light. Um, and, and the other thing, once you start to think about the, that, you start to think about how, like, the conditions for life are light, air, water, you know? Um, it's more basic than, than almost everything else. Uh, there's a great, there's an author called Sebald who has a great, um, he's, it's, a, it's a book about walking around England, but he, he ends up talking about everything under the sun. And one of the things he talks about is, the, is imagining seeing the earth from space when, you know, at that moment when fire was discovered. And there's these tiny little pinpricks of light, you know. And the history of humanity has been about more and more and more and more. And it's a great kind of, he, he's talking about it as a way that essentially we are consuming everything. We're going to consume everything in the, in the name of light to some extent. Um, so I mean, it's just, it's such, such a huge topic, but also something that's so, um, like, like if you get up, for me, if I get up in the morning and it's a really gloomy day, it, it forms my attitude for that day. If I get up in the morning and it's bright and clear and there's a lot of, I mean, I get, and I'm sure other people experience this, I get energy from light. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's almost like food. Um, well, it is the plants, isn't it? Or yes. for plants. Yes. Vitamin yes. D. Yeah. yeah, vitamin D, photosynthesis, yeah. you know, yeah. all these terms. But another aspect that I didn't um, bring up in my intro was uh, thinking about, like, you know, light in space or astronomical as it relates to astronomy or um, celestial events and such, which is something that, again, is or are metaphors for um, my work, things that I've thought about, you know, symbolically speaking. Um, 
But yeah, that's a whole other, you know, once you can just... But yeah, you bring that up, then all of a sudden the thing about time, like we measure time but, with light. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, I, and I think everybody is totally blown away by the idea that they're seeing something happen in space like hundreds of thousands of years ago. You know, it's just something, uh, because we have this sense of light being instantaneous. But in fact, it's not, and it takes time. Well, it's argued that the universe started with an explosion. The Big Bang, light. presumably. Yeah. Presumably. A blinding one. Exactly. So I guess I'll, I'll try to speak to, um, more specifically, my own practice and thinking about light and or other ways that light enters into uh, my practice um, but you know the so again there's like the, this whole notion of illumination you know is something that's literal as far as dealing with like uh, um, difficult uh, histories or social struggle in my own work and I've used light literally to sort of um, you know um, in some cases prop up uh, pieces like in particular a piece titled untitled X you know, and again, these notions of like um, propping up or illuminating like difficult parts of our history, you know, clearly X's are uh, voids or um, reference loss or a former um, uh, incarnation, former, you know, fill in the blank. Um, so, but so, but that's something that's been important to me, and and, and also like fire is uh, again an energy source, or as uh, an energy that illuminates, um, and uh, also comes up a lot in the work over the years. So, uh, in particularly to the social struggle part, you know, um, there's the fire in the series of paintings that I did call Watts paintings and their number, Watts painting number one through whatever. And fire again is having like the potential to transform, you know, um, and create a, a clean slate and then there's the potential for something new to happen. I think that we see these, you know, situations, these instances in history that, you know, where this occurs, like Watts being one moment, you know, and, and more recently, you know, it's like, again, fire, uh, the flash of, you know, the gun, and this kid is killed, or many kids, or many people. So then the Black Lives Matter movement begins. Thinking about, like, you know, some of the stuff for me has been really important, you know, and uh, it has very specific, like, associations with, you know, this notion of fire, or light, and um, illumination, so. I was, I think, I just have this image of your works on paper with this sort of, and the I, mean, I know that's like a little bit like as a vision of sort of yeah, the colorful, rays coming out rays. Of, yeah, yeah. of this figure yeah. that kind of, exactly. you know, speaks to the kind of power of an energy that you're receiving from the creative or soul or life of a person that's inspiring and, uh, yeah. you know, literally. The visual, yeah. the visual manifestation of energy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, is what I like to say. Or that also I was thinking also the light bulb going off. That knowledge is illumination mm -hmm. and knowing and some yeah. light bulb in your head and realization exactly. or something. These things being like a light. And I was thinking about your piece, the promise of the light. That was the first one that came to my mind. I yeah. mean, and just because it's more conceptual, really, but that it was just you know, just about how, how important light was you, to you in, in a personal way. I think you take something that's universal and, and, and make it really personal in that piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that piece there's lights that, that, that I photographed at night on the street and then sort of um, manipulated in the video program and then um, juxtaposed those with images of um, historic, historic images of, you know, um, various events like um, a group of slaves on a slave ship or someone that was lynched and then um, so in that, in that there's a literal uh, visual manifestation again of like what I was talking about earlier about cleansing I sort of felt that the lights in that sense were kind of cleansing the image you know mm -hmm. um, which is uh, I 
think something that you know I u uniquely arrived at, but <laughs> <laughs> I've learned in the past that I've appropriated stuff. <laughs> <laughs> whether it's conscious but I, or not. I thought it was mine, but whether it was conscious or not. My mind left to me, when you're talking about cleaning the slate, my mind left immediately to an atomic thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I, I don't really totally understand, but, but apparently shadows were etched in, in Hiroshima, or etched into concrete and rocks and stuff. Uh, I don't really understand why that happens, but, but it's such an extreme idea about the light was so intense it left a permanent shadow. You know. The other thing I was going to say, by the way, but permanent, just kind of this, we've all been talking about kind of the power and how, how important it is, and I think, I think that's kind of just there. But the other thing is, when you were talking about the, the light in the, um, uh, at Joshua Tree, is how fragile each moment of light is. It's really hard to pin anything down. It's really slippery, in a way. I, I used to do a little bit of plein air painting, and... That was real. I mean, you know, you're working, working, working. It's yeah. changing, changing, changing. Yeah. You know, uh, where you, yeah, and where you start and where you end are two totally different lights that you're in. Yeah, to just sit there and watch the entire sunset, you know, from beginning to end, and the, you think it's over, and then it keeps going, and things keep changing. It's just kind of, kind of amazing to see how many, how what a range, what a spectrum of color. Well, in the desert, too, you're in a situation where you can see that entire thing, you know, yeah. all the way. And when, yeah. you, when you turn away from the sunset, often some of the most beautiful, amazing stuff is on the other side, you know, the way the light's hitting it. All of the above. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so thank you guys again. It was really cool. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rico. Thank you.